find your passion, find what you love to do, whatever really stands out for you and catches your attention, do that for your work one day. Sponsors play a huge role. Almost whatever your sport, almost whatever your passion, you can also get sponsors to make a living out of it. On the last evening of my 25th college reunion, there was a party in a tent. There was dancing and music and noise. So much noise that a lot of us started to drift out of the tent so we could hear each other talk and catch up with classmates that we had not seen in more than two decades. As I talked with my friends, I made an astounding discovery. 80% of them were unhappy with their lives. I feel as though I've wasted my life and I'm halfway through it, they said. I don't know what my life is all about. Now, I was privileged to go to Yale, and we were standing on a summer evening in the middle of Yale's old campus, and the people that I was speaking with were privileged and highly educated and financially well-off and in positions of power. And they had the first house and the second house. And 80% of them were unhappy with their lives. Everybody always asks if you have a career, if you're married, if you have children, life, like if life was some kind of grocery list. But no one ever asks us if we are happy. I think this is important to pause here and say, one of the most important things a human being can strive for is true, pure happiness. Now, the problem is I think many people think it's going to come from stuff that it won't come from. They think if they get rich enough, have the most beautiful wife, husband, the right house, all kinds of worldly material things. But this is the mistake. They're climbing the corporate ladder, but the ladder is against the wrong wall. That wall is a wall of lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Even many so-called Christians have fallen into this mistake. A far better way is to find what you love, and through that you start to achieve and become excellent. Because you love the process so much, and you're so captivated by this love of the process, that results come naturally. Athletes are competing against each other, mind games and tactics are used, and Although these athletes are friends, when they enter that curtain, well, everything goes out the window. They are competitors. So I'm going to use a few examples here of doing something because you love the process, not for the money or the fame or the recognition. If you find a process that you love, the rewards like money will come by itself. But don't do it for money or fame. Remember, reigning world champion gets set up for our first women's quarterfinal race. Alexander Miroslav accelerating through the middle as expected, finding pace in the top. She's miles ahead of the speed walk. Miroslav made an uncharacteristic mistake down low, which allowed the door to open 
for Kaluchka, but something happened at the top. Let's watch this again. There was a hesitation. That was the stick from Miroslav. How did she find the speed? Oh, it was literally that last hold for Alexander Kaluchka that did it. How did Alexander Miroslav pull that one back? Stadium. And they hug, but that was unbelievable in the final section. Or like this guy that just has such a love for flying with his motorized paraglider. I think he's going to get a, what I think, a burger from McDonald's. He's going to go through the drive-in. He just loves the process. And because he loves the process, he becomes really good at it. And because he becomes really good at it, he probably has a very successful YouTube channel and he can earn good money off it. But you don't start looking for fame, success or money. You start with what do you love? Uh, we're running out of daylight, so I'm going to send it pretty quick. Quick reminder before I get in the air, airfoil t-shirts, campaign's ending soon on Teespring. So link, clickety-click up here. All right, this goes there, that goes there, this goes here, and this goes here. Seems legit. Sending it. First class, next day air. Let's talk a little bit about what's about to happen. So I said there's a few things that have to go right for this to go off without a hitch. Uh, the location I'm going to, there's a pretty good amount of open space to land, but I have to ensure that there's, like, it's not a busy hour, there's not a lot of people out there, because, ooh, this one's tight, tight. <laughs> so, for this to go off without a hitch, I gotta evaluate the situation with the parking lot and the grassy area where I intend on landing. It's probably gonna be only one or two directions that I can land. So I have to account for the wind. I'm gonna be looking out for wind indicators. To me, it looks like I can skirt into that big old patch of grass. All right, approach is clear, no power lines. All I gotta do is hook a 180. And beautiful. All right, I'm just gonna leave all this stuff out here for now. We're gonna go in and see if we can get some food. Let's get out of here. Get back to the park before sunset. Area looks clear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Burger number two, it's happening. So how do you find a career that you're deeply passionate about? Learn, 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 research, research, research. Obviously watch these videos of ours as well. Look what this guy says about the, your idea muscle, your brain that has to be creative. He tries to come up with 10 new business ideas a day. You have to practice it. Business and entrepreneurship is a skill you learn. It's not something like some people have it and others don't have it. We all got passions, we all got to have careers. Try and come up with 10 new business ideas in areas that you're excited about every day. If you're not coming up with 10 ideas a day, that's why I have this thing. If I'm not coming up, if I'm not filling up this page every single day, then my idea muscle will atrophy. And I started this in 2001 and I still do it every single day. Like you have to come up with ideas every single day or the idea muscle atrophies. The good news is after about six months of doing that, you're like a machine. Like people get surprised at how many ideas you could just have. What's up everybody, it's Enes here. Welcome to another video. Today we're at First Motors here in Dubai. This is world's most exclusive car dealership with over $100 million worth of cars. So this might seem like the opposite of what I'm talking about. A car dealership with $100 million worth of cars. What is that, almost 2 billion rands worth of cars just in the show, uh, showroom area? So no. You don't have to neglect your family, your friends, your calling God has given you to do, even if you are in an industry that has a lot of money. You can maintain balance and still be a great father, a wife, 
husband and do great things uh, by the grace of God through the vessel of this business. They have some of the most expensive cars in the world right here and today we're taking a look. So we have Ali here who is the manager of this amazing car dealership. First off, thank you so much for having us Welcome. here. Welcome. This place is insane. I feel thank like I'm so hidden in a candy store and tell us a little bit about the dealership. We've been open for over seven months now in Dubai. This started as a hobby, so we had a passion for cars and uh, we were also buyers of cars. You know, we saw a gap in terms of service when it comes to customers uh -huh. to just uh, start this place out of a hobby. He's almost underselling it a little bit. Look around here. I mean, the place is spotless. Every detail is thought out. The lighting, the spacing, the way the cars are laid out. We had special lighting engineers. Now that, you know, we're in the game, we're actually thinking it's too small. So uh, expand it. upstairs also does belong to us. We're going to expand. We're going to put some more cars upstairs. But, you know, with the cars, it's limitless to how far you can go. This is an area I really like. Yeah. You basically have like a little sit down area. I'm assuming a lot of clients yeah. come in, hang out here, right? Yeah. A lot of clients, they actually don't know what they want to buy. They like to come here. They like to sit. They like to chat. Apart from the cars, we're a holding company. So we do property, we do gold and jewelry, we do watches, and we're opening the real estate and the watch is actually upstairs. Upstairs. Yeah. Cars that we bring here, we want them to be unique. We want them to be the best of the best when gotcha. we bring them here. So we don't just bring normal cars. It's almost like not just buying a car out of a car dealership. It's more so like you're going to an art gallery. Of course. And you're kind of feeling it out to see if there's a particular art that may pique your interest because it's kind of one off or really unique. Of course, of course. That's what we try to bring here. We have to set ourselves apart from our dealers. Our market is different and we do try to bring the unique pieces here that other people don't have. How much is that car? That one is 15.5 million dirhams, which is roughly around 4.5 million USD. 4.5 million dollars, 90 million rand approximately, almost 100 million rand for one car. Oh, there you go. Yeah. That's pretty insane. So this is the successor to the McLaren F1. Uh -huh which is uh, trading around uh, 50 million USD now. La Ferrari. La Ferrari. How many of these in the world? 499. Price is roughly around 12.5 million dirhams. That's amazing. Mike, yeah. can we get a close up? I just realized something. What's... Look at the little Ferrari logo built into the paint job there. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Tell us what we have here. This is the Sian 63. 63 have been produced. What's unique about this car is that every single Sion produced is individually colored. So this is the only yellow one you will find in the world. The car being the most powerful Lamborghini ever produced. So Ali's gonna show you guys in. Yeah. What do you think, Mikey? Uh, What's beautiful about the car is actually the back. If you can get the back angle of it. I don't know, this one's been sold anyway, but. Price on this thing? 15.5. Devo is the most ex one of the it's the most expensive hypercar we have. Devo is uh, 34 million. Two of them have already been on first motors and sold. And we were standing on a summer evening in the middle of Yale's old campus, and the people that I was speaking with were privileged and highly educated and financially well off and in positions of power, and 80 percent of them were unhappy with their lives. Find what you love to do. Don't just go after fame and recognition and think that that will bring you happiness. Find a process that you love to do, that from that your happiness and joy comes. And also get a balanced life with your family, Bible study, prayer, doing God's work. That can bring true joy.